The tale of Lawrence of Arabia and motorcycles unfolds as a fervent narrative from birth to beyond the grave. Colonel Lawrence, a figure encompassing roles such as writer, spy, archaeologist, British officer, and notably a motorcycle enthusiast, was, at his core, an adventurer. Familiarly recognized as Lawrence of Arabia, this renowned motorcyclist embodied a complex yet revered persona, leaving a mark on history in more ways than one. T.E. Lawrence took immense pride in possessing a collection of seven Bruff Superior motorcycles, with four of them being SS 100s. The camaraderie between George Bruff and Thomas Edward Lawrence extended beyond mere friendship. They were true motorcycle confrères. In a gesture of homage, Lawrence christened his motorcycles after his steadfast companion, affectionately naming them George I through George VII. The following passage is taken from T.E. Lawrence's book entitled The Mint, and the chapter is called The Road. This book was based upon the diaries and notes that he kept of a time long gone by when he served in the RAF, and when he would ride free through the fields and lanes of England on his trusty Bruff Superior. In five minutes, my bed would be down, ready for the night. In four more, I was in my breeches, pulling on my gauntlets as I walked over to my bike, which lived in a garage hut opposite. Its tires never wanted air. Its engine had a habit of starting at the second kick. A good habit, for only by frantic plunges upon the starting pedal could my puny weight force the engine over the seven atmospheres of its compression. Bonerge's first glad roar at being alive again nightly jarred the huts of Cadet College into life. There he goes, the noisy bugger someone would say enviously on every flight. It is part of an airman's profession to be familiar with engines, and a thoroughbred engine is our undying satisfaction. The camp wore the virtue of my boa like a flower in its cap. Tonight, Targ and Dusty came to the steps of our hut to see me off. Running down to smoke, perhaps, jeered Dusty, hitting at my regular game of London and back for tea on fine Wednesday afternoons. Boa is a top gear machine, as sweet in that as most single cylinders in middle. I chug lordlily past the guardroom and through the speed limit at no more than 16. Round the bend, past the farm, and the way straightens. Now for it. The engine's final development is 52 horsepower. It is a miracle that all this docile strength waits behind one tiny lever for the pleasure of my hand. Another bend and I have the honour of one of England's straightest and fastest roads. The burble of my exhaust unwound like a long cord behind me. Soon my speed snapped it, and I heard only the cry of the wind, which my battering head split and fended aside. The cry rose with my speed to a shriek, while the air's coldness streamed like two jets of iced water into my dissolving eyes. I screwed them into slits and focused my sight 200 yards ahead of me on the empty mosaic of the tar's graveled undulations. Like arrows, the tiny flies pricked my cheeks, and sometimes a heavier body, some housefly or beetle, would crash into my face or lips like a spent bullet. A glance at the speedometer, 78. Boanerges is warming up. I pull the throttle right open on the top of the slope and we swoop flying across the dip and up down, up down the switchback beyond. The weighty machine launching itself like a projectile with a whir of wheels into the air at the takeoff of each rise to land lurchingly with such a snatch of the driving chain as jerks my spine like a rictus. Once we fled across the evening light with the yellow sun on my left, a huge shadow roared just overhead. A Bristol fighter from Whitewash Villas, our neighbor aerodrome, was banking sharply round. I checked speed an instant to wave, and the slipstream of my impetus snapped my arm and elbow astern like a raised flail. The pilot pointed down the road towards Lincoln. I sat hard in the saddle, folded back my ears, and went away after him, like a dog after a hare. Quickly, we drew abreast, 
as the impulse of his dive to my level exhausted itself. The next mile of road was rough. I braced my feet into the rests, thrust with my arms, and clenched my knees on the tank till its rubber grips goggled under my thighs. Over the first pothole, Boanerges screamed in surprise, its mudguard bottoming with a yawp upon the tyre. Through the plunges of the next ten seconds, I clung on, wedging my gloved hand in the throttle lever so that no bump should close it and spoil our speed. Then the motorcycle wrenched sideways into three long ruts. It swayed dizzily, wagging its tail for thirty awful yards. Out came the clutch, and the engine raced freely. Boa checked and straightened his head with a shake, as a bruff superior should. The bad ground was passed, and on the new road, our flight became bird-like. My head was blown out with air so that my ears had failed, and we seemed to whirl soundlessly between the sun-gilt stubble fields. I dared, on a rise, to slow imperceptibly and glance sideways into the sky. There the biff was, two hundred yards and more back. Play with the fellow? Why not? I slowed to ninety and signalled with my hand for him to overtake. Slowed ten more, sat up. Over, he rattled. His passenger, a helmeted and goggled grin, hung out of the cockpit to pass me the up year RAF greeting. They were hoping I was a flash in the pan, giving them the best. Open went my throttle again. Boa crept level, 50 feet below them, held them, and sailed ahead into the clean and lonely country. An approaching car pulled nearly into its ditch at the sight of our race. The Bristol was zooming among the trees and telegraph poles, with my scurrying spot only 80 yards ahead. I gained, though, steadily, perhaps five miles an hour faster. Down went my left hand to give the engine two extra dollops of oil for fear that something was running hot, but an overhead Jap twin, super tuned like this one, would carry on to the moon and back, unfaltering. In 1935, at the age of 46, British Army Colonel Thomas Edward Lawrence met his tragic end. Fatally injured while riding his bruff superior motorcycle at considerable speeds through the English countryside, Lawrence swerved to avoid two boys on bikes. This incident not only marked the conclusion of Lawrence of Arabia's motorcycle journey, but also etched a place in history for this bruff racing motorcycle. T.E. Lawrence, a figure synonymous with gentleman adventurers of his era, left an indelible mark. Even today, his spirit of exploration continues to serve as inspiration for Bruff Superior, driving the design and evolution of this iconic motorcycle model. The resurgence of Lawrence of Arabia's legendary motorcycle has sparked a revolution in the luxury motorcycle industry. In a heartfelt homage to Thomas Edward Lawrence, the esteemed motorcycle brand has introduced a limited edition series aptly named Lawrence. The mission is clear. Propel Lawrence's iconic motorcycle into the 21st century by crafting a modern interpretation of his bruff superior. This contemporary marvel seamlessly blends classic and retro design with cutting-edge technology, ensuring compliance with today's safety regulations. Crafted with meticulous attention to detail, the Lawrence series is a testament to the brand's commitment to excellence. Utilizing only the finest materials, such as titanium and aerospace alloys, this handcrafted masterpiece incorporates state-of-the-art design elements, like carbon structural steel and a four-disc brake system. The engineers and artisans at Bruff Superior are hand-picked for their expertise and skilled knowledge, ensuring that each motorcycle embodies the pinnacle of craftsmanship. It's no surprise that the circle of Bruff owners continues to expand, drawn in by the allure of a modern classic that pays homage to the spirit of adventure embodied by Lawrence of Arabia. Crafted with unparalleled precision, this legendary motorcycle comes to life entirely through the skilled hands of the industry's finest craftsmen within the brand's workshops nestled in Toulouse, France. The selection of Toulouse as the production hub is not arbitrary. It pays homage to the city's historical significance as the site of the French aeronautics and space industries. 
the Lawrence is more than a mere motorcycle. It's a testament to pushing the boundaries of performance adventure. The growing community of Lawrence owners attests to its success in setting a new benchmark in its category. Priced at 66,000 euros, this mechanical masterpiece is not just a ride, it's a work of art. Produced in an ultra-limited series with only 188 models in existence, a symbolic nod to Lawrence of Arabia's birth year, 1888, this legendary motorcycle stands among the most exclusive and expensive in the world. An enduring investment, it beckons passionate riders ready to join the elite ranks of bruff owners marking a journey into the pinnacle of motorcycle luxury.